I started off this channel with a Pionis guide. Uh, I recently rewatched it and wanted to rip my eyes out. <laughs> I'm really not very proud of it being my most viewed video. So I thought I would read you the whole entire thing. So that's what I'm gonna do on this one. So for the regular viewers, you might have heard some of these things before. However, I will say that I have just become more experienced with owning parrots and you know, YouTube, talking to a camera, editing and whatnot. And I also watched it and thought, you know what? I would have maybe left that out or added this and that. So hopefully you will all still stick around to hear about the amazing Payonis Parrot. In this guide or overview, so to say, I will be talking about everything that I have learned from owning a Pionis as a pet. And that will include a little bit about the species, then about their personalities, how are they as pets, their training, noise level, cage requirements, their diet, and what you can expect to pay for a Pionis and what the monthly cost will be of owning one. So let's just start off with the basics. What is a Pionis? In nature, you will find the Pionis parrot around Mexico and in the Amazon rainforest in South America. And there are seven different species. However, only five are common in the pet trade. The most common are the white cap Pionis, the Maximilian Pionis and the blue headed Pionis. However, you will also find the bronze winged Pinus and the dusky Pinus. So size wise, the Pionis is a medium, medium sized bird since they are bigger than Conyers, but smaller than Amazons and African Greys. Another fun fact about them is that they do not have what is called a oil gland or a preening gland. And that is why you might notice that they look a bit more duller in their color because normally parrots will have this gland at the base of their tail where they secrete a sort of waxy, oily fluid that they distribute onto their feathers, making them more vibrant and keeping their condition great and helping their skin, giving them some vitamins and also just making the feather coat waterproof. So pinus actually aren't the only bird species that are missing these glands. Most doves do not have them, uh, Amazon parrots also don't have them and also hyacinth macaws do not have these glands. Now I haven't found any scientific studies that should suggest that missing one of these glands could cause any health issues. However, I do know that it gives the pinus a bit of a different odor because you might know that people say that their bird smells like honey and that is actually the oil from this gland that gives them that smell. So missing one, pinus have a bit of a different odor and some people don't like it, but I personally haven't noticed it. Another unique thing about the pinus is that they do a thing referred to as a pinus sneeze or a pinus wheezing sound. And it is a sound that they usually make whenever they are excited, but a lot of new owners get really concerned because it can sound a bit like a respiratory problem. Now, if your bird or Pionis does something unusual with their breathing and you aren't sure if it's a Pionis sneeze or wheezing, always just contact your avian vet to be absolutely sure that there isn't a respiratory problem. So now that you know some of the basics on the species, let's talk about how they are in general as pets. So for the past two years, I have had the pleasure of sharing my living space and my daily life with my blue-headed Pionis, Charlie, whom I've had since she was a little, little baby. So talking about personality when it comes to pets can be very difficult because it is super hard to generalize since many just pets have their individual thing going on. And you'll see that on a couple of topics in this video, cause what might be referred to as species appropriate might not apply to all birds in that species since their individual personalities and experiences have a lot more to say. And in my opinion, I actually do believe that it has more to say than what is species appropriate. So some Pionis might do this and be like that and some might not and behave completely differently. But generally speaking, what Pionis are known for is being very chill and calm and just overall 
a relaxed and quiet bird. Again, might not go for every single Pionis, but so far I will say that all of these traits have matched with Charlie extremely well. Now I'll get into noise a bit later, but what I mean by being chill and calm is that a Pinus would follow you around and be where you are, but they aren't as um, involved and attention seeking like other species might be. They also aren't really known to be extremely cuddly and playful, at least not as much. So you will rarely, for example, see a Pinus wanting to lay on its back or getting into your sweater and you know cuddle up they rarely do that however they do enjoy getting scratches on their head and sitting on your shoulder and chilling in terms of playing there is a running joke in the pionis community that they only play when we aren't <laughs> looking and all birds should be given toys i'm just gonna say that and it is just a natural bird behavior to forage and play and pionis do enjoy it and they can really be some acrobats from time to time but i will say that they, they aren't this uh, clown bird that is full of energy 24 7 and jumps up and down like maybe a kaik or a conure would another personality trait that they have that i really love and enjoy about having charlie as a pet is that they are known to be a bit more independent and don't get me wrong because all birds are flock animals and if you can get one or two or three more pioneers that would be absolutely amazing because they do get a lot from each other and also from you as the owner however i will say that it has been extremely easy to teach charlie to be home alone and condition her to an everyday life where i leave for school or leave for work without her having any problem entertaining herself being by herself playing by herself and it is known to be a bit easier to train a partner to do this i'm not saying everyone will be but they are known for this a bit more independent personality. So to summarize, generally speaking, remember there will always be exceptions to this, but generally they are chill and relaxed during the day. They don't do as much. They just wanna follow you around and see what you're doing. They aren't super cuddly, but they do enjoy scratches on the head. They like to play with toys and crawling around, but they aren't energetic clown birds that enjoy laying on their backs and stuff like that. I also wanted to add that like African greys, they are known to be a bit more skittish in their nature. And lastly, they are not as needy for your attention as many other parrot species, which gives them this independent trait. Now, all the behaviors I just described can always be changed depending on what habit you get your bird into and how much time and effort you're willing to put into training. As for most parrots, pionis are very smart and in my experience, they are very training motivated. Just like with dogs, in my experience, the best way to teach a bird to do something is via positive reinforcement training. And what this training is, is that you wait or lure a bird to do something that you want them to repeat and then you treat them for it. Now, this will make the bird associate the behavior with a treat and therefore they are more likely to repeat that behavior when they do, you add a command or a hand signal and that way you have just taught your bird a trick. Now the easiest trick or training to get started with is target training and you might have heard about it before. It requires your bird to touch the end of a stick and the reason that it is a good starting trick is that most birds get it fairly quickly and it is also a way for you as a trainer to learn how to communicate with your bird. You can learn how to use a clicker fairly easy if that is something you want to move forward with. But it is also just a nice trick to have to lure your bird to go different places or teaching other tricks. For treats, you can use nuts and seeds and more about why in the diet section. But I would wish I could sit here and say that this is their favorite treat, but this is again an individual thing, so that's for you to figure out. But here some hits have been uh, walnuts and almonds, uh, pumpkin seeds and cashew nuts. So you can try out those for a start, but again, it's individual. Just of course be aware of the portion size and don't award a whole nut for one recall, but chop it up into pieces. Let's go to the next one, which is their noise level. 
Now I'm willing to bet that some of you are interested in a pinus because you searched up most quiet bird, a pattern friendly bird, and don't worry, that's how I found them too. <laughs> however, and big however, they are known for being quiet birds. They are not known for being quiet pets. Here it again becomes super hard for me to sit here and say, yes, they're quiet or no, they're not, because it is really an individual thing again. And it really depends on how the bird was raised, in what environment and how noisy was that environment. A parrot or bird raised in a loud environment is more likely to become a parrot that screams a whole lot more. And therefore, it is also important for you to consider if you have any screaming kids, if you live beside a busy road, if you have a dog that barks all the time, that yes, your bird might be more prone to scream. Now, Charlie, however, is one of those birds that makes zero noise. She is the quietest thing ever. The only thing that makes noise is when she flies around like that. Maybe she chirps a little bit, but I haven't heard her scream for weeks, maybe months. So there the stereotype really fits, but I can't sit here and say that every single Pionis is going to be like that. Another thing regarding their noise, I actually got a pretty interesting comment a few videos back of someone asking what kind of noise a Pionis make, because she was very sensitive to extremely high pitched noises, like maybe a cockatiel scream. So regarding the type of sound a Pionis make, it is also hard because some might mimic a loud pitchy noise they heard. But whenever Charlie screams and whenever I've heard other Pionis screams, it is more of a high squawk like a macaw scream. I'll try and play a clip of what Charlie's scream sounds like. So as you can hear, hers is more of a high squawk, but I also do have heard some Pionis screams having this very high pitch. So again, difficult to say, unfortunately. I wanna end off the noise category with just mentioning that Pionis aren't known for talking. I know that that is a big deal for someone when they get a parrot. However, Pionis are not known for doing so. Some can, of course, and some learn it, but with their more quieter nature, they aren't known for being very good talkers. So if you, after hearing all of this, still think that the Pionis would be a great fit for you, let's move on to how to take care of them, starting with cages. So when it comes to birds and actually just most pets in general, bigger is always better. Now for a bird, the cage should never be their primary space, like with maybe a snake or a hamster but instead they should have multiple hours a day outside the cage for them to stretch their wings and get some exercise. The cage is more of a safe place for your bird where you can maybe put it in whenever they need to sleep or whenever you're going out for them to just be more secure and make sure that they don't destroy your house while you're gone. <laughs> Therefore, it is still super important to have a big enriching cage for your bird to entertain themselves whenever you're gone or just have as a space whenever you're home. Now, birds in nature obviously use most of their time in the trees. So when you are looking for a cage model, try and look for a very wide cage rather than a very tall cage because they are very unlikely to utilize the bottom part. Here are some cages that I really like and think would fit a Pionis. The bar spacing shouldn't be bigger than two centimeters or what is equivalent to 0.8 inches. If you have a bigger bar spacing, there could be a risk that your bird gets their feet twisted in some weird way or just can, you know, get out of the cage through the bars. So you really want to go for a bar spacing that fits your size of bird. So as you can maybe see, you are going to spend some money on a good cage, but you're also going to be spending money on things to put inside the cage. So first up, you are going to need a lot of different perches and branches. Now you can get these from the pet store, but it is just easier and free to go outside and pick up some good natural branches. 
just be aware that there might be some bacteria on all of the stuff that you find outside. So it is a very good idea to just put some boiling water over them and let them dry before putting them in the cage. The perches that often come with any cage that you buy are referred to as dowel perches and it is these very long and smooth perches. Now it is always just a good idea to remove these perches because if your bird uses these perches their feet will be in the exact same position at all times and that can lead to a foot condition called bumblefoot where they get sores under their feet and it can get infected and look very grim. So natural branches and perches is the way. You can also get these bendable fabric perches called rope perches. Just be aware that your bird can chew in it and ingest the fabric. So if your bird is known to be a chewer, I would maybe put it outside the cage so that you can keep a better eye on it. But if not, rope perches are absolutely fine to have in the cage since they do give your bird's feet something soft to sit on. So after filling your bird's cage with perches, it's time to find some good toys. Here again is a really good idea to go as natural as possible because the way a bird plays is legit by destroying the living hell out of something. So if you get your bird a toy and that toy is gone within the matter of hours or days, then it was a great success and you need to buy more of those. Many types of wood make for extremely good toys and if they are dyed, just make sure that the dye that is used on the wood is absolutely safe, but other natural materials could be cork or seagrass or some leather types. So go out there and experiment a little bit and try and find some very good toys for your bird. So birds play by destroying things and therefore there's actually some very unfortunate bad marketing out there for bird toys that you should really avoid since it can end up being dangerous for your bird. So I just want to mention that you should try and stay away from mirrors, bells, plastic bolts or anything made out of plastic and all of these kinds of huts often called a snuggle hut. And I just want to add because I saw some people say this but birds do not need beds. These aren't hammocks that they sleep in. Uh, birds just sit on a perch with their head tucked behind their back and sleep like that. They don't, they don't need beds. Lastly, for things to put inside your cage, you need some bowls. And I would just always go with stainless steel. It's easier to clean and therefore harder for bacteria to grow. And just stainless steel for both food and water. So to summarize what you need in a cage, you should first of all get as big as a cage as possible. Remember to give your bird loads of time outside the cage and also that it is not the quantity of time they're out, but the quality of time they're out. So remember to train them and stimulate them whenever they're outside the cage. Get loads of natural branches and perches for your cage, different textures and sizes. That's always a good idea to avoid something like bumblefoot. Fill the cage with natural toys made out of wood, seagrass, or any other natural material. If they are dyed, make sure that they are safe. Stay away from mirrors, snuggle huts and plastic as well as just watch out that they aren't chewing in the rope perches if you get any. And lastly, get stainless steel bowls. So now your cage is ready and you have all the necessary stuff, let's talk about their diet. Please be nice, please be nice, please be nice. The reason diet is so difficult to talk about is because there is still being done a lot of research on what we should feed our parrots in captivity. And so there are loads of different opinions and different things that people do, but I'm gonna show you what I know and what I would do. Now, one thing that has been documented and I can say with certainty is that do not feed your bird an all seed diet. I'm referring to these giant bags of seeds and nuts with parrots on the front that you can buy at almost every single pet store unfortunately. The reason these are not recommended and actually bad for your bird is because they are extremely high in fat. Now in nature birds would maybe be able to burn off this fat but birds in captivity even free flyers would not be able to burn off this amount of fat and therefore they can get a condition called fatty liver disease which can actually be deadly. So please whatever you do don't go for an all seed diet. 
Nuts and seeds still do contain some good nutrients and fat isn't always bad, but that is why they can be awesome as treats for training, also because birds just really like them. Another tendency I sometimes see, it is a bit weird to me, is whenever people feed their bird whatever they like the most. So if they have a bird that is really into sunflower seeds, they will just feed them a bowl of sunflower seeds. But that's not really how it works because animals do not have nutritional wisdom, so to say. Because that would be equivalent to feeding your dog only treats as their main diet or maybe chocolate because that's what they like the most. It just doesn't add up and you shouldn't be doing that. There are some awesome guides on diet conversion that you can apply to any diet because I will actually say that in this section I would recommend you to go and do your own research. Just remember to be critical of the sources and don't don't listen to John on Facebook, whatever he said. Go and do your research. Look up some research documentation or some articles or something like that to find out what diet would fit your bird the most. But as inspiration or a place to start, I would love to share what I have learned from my own research and also from vet school. For the main diet, I can start off with what Charlie is given. She gets chop, which is basically uh, a lot of vegetables and sometimes some fruit mixed together in a fine chopped mix. And then she gets tops pellets. The good part about this diet is that the majority of the things the bird is eating are fresh and natural. However, in my opinion again, there are some bad pellet brands out there and I would like to share what I believe that you should look out for and why. So again, in my opinion, you can always look at the ingredients list and if the first ingredients is ground corn followed by a bunch of added vitamins and minerals, in my opinion, it is not a good brand. What I like to compare these types of pellets to is white bread with a bunch of vitamin pills on top. Because yes, technically you are getting all the vitamins that you need, but take that compared to a pile of vegetables and fruits and fresh sunlight, it just seems healthier. The only pellet brand that I have really liked so far is Tops, and that is because all of the ingredients are natural and organic and it makes sense that they would be there. <laughs> These pellets also aren't baked but are actually cold pressed so that they don't lose any nutrients and are also very breakable and therefore edible for the bird. So right now Charlie's diet is chop in both the morning and the evening with a few pellets on top to just give her that protein boost that she might need. I did notice her poop get a bit watery when I didn't add the pellets. So from now on, it's just chop with maybe three or four pellets on top. And she absolutely loves it and her poops are perfect. So go out and do your own research on this topic. Whenever I am done in vet school and have my exotic vet title, I'll gladly pull that card. But right now, I don't think I have the authority to sit here and say what I think your bird should eat. So adding up all of these things, let's talk about how much it costs to have a pinus on a monthly basis and also how much you can expect to give for the pinus. So while the cage is a one-time purchase, you also do have to consider the monthly cost of owning a bird. And that includes their food and toy refill, and maybe you have to replace some purchase. There should also always be money, and this goes for any pet, to go to the vet. Now with Charlie, I spent monthly around $35, $40 on her, and that's for her job and her pellets and for toys. And then I also do have an emergency fund if she should need a vet visit. I also want to mention that you do not just need a regular vet, you need an exotic vet. So now that you know everything, you only need the Pionis and how much can you expect one of those to cost and where do you find one. So this is where most people are stopped since Pionis are really hard to come by and therefore they are also very pricey. Taking me as an example, I was so lucky that I live in a small country, so there was absolutely no waiting list at this breeder 
and I only paid $450 for Charlie, which is nothing compared to what I'm hearing from my US viewers. So uh, if you live in the US, bad luck, I guess, because what I hear is that their waiting lists are years long and that they pay thousands of thousands of dollars for a Pyona species, any of the species. Rescues is also an option if the waiting list is way too long for you and you are ready to take on a rescue bird. Now, I have two rescues in my country, so no chance that any would show up. But I of course think that rescuing is an awesome way to go around and get a bird and give them a second chance. If you are stuck and do not know where to start finding a Pyonis, I did make a video going over step by step what I would do if I wanted to find another Pyonis. So you can go check that one out if that's interesting. I want to end on a really, really important note. I do not want this video to be an adrenaline rush for people to think that the Pyonis is absolutely amazing and go out and get one. Because Pyonis do have a lifespan of 30 to 40 years. That is a long ass commitment and birds in general are a long ass commitment. So please think three, four, five extra times before getting any bird. There is a reason that they are the most rehomed animal and that is because people get them, realize that they're too much of a deal and they are way too noisy than they first anticipated and whatnot. So please, please, please do research and be absolutely sure that you want a Pyonis. Now, if you are a new viewer and really do enjoy Pyonis content or animal content in general, really do consider subscribing since I am a fairly new YouTuber here on the platform and therefore it really helps out a ton. On this channel, I like to document my training with Charlie. I take her all sorts of places with the intentions of showing people how to create a companionship with your parrot and try to focus on the amazing things about this companionship rather than everything that is dangerous. I do also go to vet school and like to make videos about my vet school journey. So if any of that sounds interesting, please hit subscribe and until then, bye.